Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Ladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Paeus from Mickey Huber. Now, I'm not sure if, if Paeus is the right pronunciation, but I, I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> now, I've seen this tangle forever. And, uh, well, reason being, I've seen it forever. I'm looking at the date on the blog post, and it's from 2010. And I've just, I've never tried it. So I, as I was peeking around for what to do next, this one popped up and I'm like, well, now's the time. All right. So this, it's a neat tangle. It has some familiarities, of course, with a lot of other things. And I encourage you to take a look at the, for more inspiration, because I'll have that, have the blog post here um, for, and it's, I always find it interesting to hear the inspiration and any comments from the originator, you know, of the tangle. Um, it's I, I find it interesting and it helps me to kind of get a get a picture, you know, a better picture of of the tangle, I guess. Now this one is is neat in the fact that you do not have to worry about if your curves are straight, your lines are straight, or anything. Don't worry about that. And take a look at the samples in there. Um, it, it just seems like it's rather whimsical and can just go however you want it to go. Now, the, my challenge is that I'm, I keep making it look like flux and, and it's just like, oh, I, I just need to personally not worry about it. So we start off with just, you know, basically it's, it's kind of a teardrop-ish sort of shape, um, but at the same time can kind of, kind of be however you want it. And I'm going to try to try to not to do something that looks like flux, although I know it's, it's going to, I'm, I'm going to there, I'm, I'm making it weird on purpose <laughs> and not that it has to be, there's no, you know, anything it's, it's, I'm trying to also get myself in the, just don't worry about it mode. All right. Then coming from that same point where we started and and where, where we ended, we're going to do a couple of auras. And so if you don't know what an aura is, it is just what I'm doing, basically doing an outline, or this would be an inline, I suppose, because it's on the inside, but you get the point. All right, so I'm going to do two, and that seems to be, seems to be the formula. You know, and two, I'm also trying not to worry too much about anything, because if you look in the, and also read, it, it, it helps to reinforce that just don't worry about it. All right, so... Basically, you know, your original and then, you know, two uh, interior auras. Now, one of the things that uh, Mickey puts uh, in, in the post is um, that she'll, you know, do the shape. But if she feels like, well, it needs to be a little larger because she generally said she she starts on the outside and then works in. But if it needs it on the it needs something else on the outside, well, then she adds it. And that's just perfect centangle. All right. Then the last step is... Um, on the inside, you know, doing kind of kind of a final aura, but you know, it doesn't it's this one is not necessarily going into the point. You could also fill in, you know, with some some you know gaps if need be. Oh, I see my thing is bouncing. Why is it bouncing? Hold on a second. Let's see if I can fix it right now without it. Okay, now it's behaving for a minute. I made some adjustments, but apparently. Not so, <laughs> apparently not taking. All right, so I'm going to fill in this intersection. And then, you know, this is, the, and this is also one that it's about play. That's what I'm going to call it, just play. You know, putting these where wherever you want. You can have it kind of grow out of itself. Um, in, uh, let's see, let's just, we'll add some, we'll add some other ones. Let's see, and I'm going to just... You know, because some of hers kind of look like, uh, look a little bit like uh, Rick's version of Flux. And I, I'm, I'm almost going to, I should check the dates to see, you know, which kind of predates which. I mean, but Flux is different. Flux, it's, it is um, it is a different animal. This, you know, we're auraing inside. Um, and then, then let's fill it in. And so I'm kind of making mine come out of the same space, but I see on uh, her samples that it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to do that either. 
um, again, this is just one of those, however you see it, um, and she had some, you know, kind of growing right out of the top of, of one. Well, let me, let's do, just because it'll be symmetrical, there, we'll do like that, and... this and and again this is a this is a definitely just don't worry about it type of things we want it to be organic looking and i'm thinking the 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 less perfect it is the more perfect it is <laughs> you know and um yeah you know what here's what i'm going to do so that's that's essentially it and you just grow it however you want to grow it then um adding some uh some orbs i i put on the on the uh the step out orbify um actually you know it let me interrupt myself for a moment so i'm gonna i'm gonna put some orbs in between these two i had another thought and um <laughs> and I, I do like to interrupt myself you know and you, i mean you can do the orbs however you want them if you want them to, to climb you know all the way up and out and, and spill over i mean that's one of the things also that's similar to flux um, but this one i was just calling to me to do a little little one right here just because maybe i didn't feel like putting a bunch of orbs in there i don't know <laughs> and then just a little on this inside here well I like the idea of starting with the the, uh, the the kind of the end result that you want and um, and then working inwards because some t there's some tangles where you know you start in inside and, and you're working and it's growing outward and you really have to make sure that you have enough space and so this is kind of neat like that I think I'm gonna have these ones maybe pour out because that's kind of neat and then I could have some tucking underneath here and here let's see and then I'll finish up here and this is kind of fun too because you can stop put some orbs in one place move to another area and something strikes you to do like right now I'm thinking oh you know so I've got these orbs coming out here. There's no reason why I couldn't put another shape right here. And we'll do our aura. You know, and like so. And it's... You know it's all good and same thing over here I was gonna balance it out I suppose and maybe I have to put one over on this side but this is what's fun about tangling we're not um, we haven't said oh I'm going to draw X picture let's see I'm trying to let's see I, I was alerted that on, on Instagram it kind of cuts off one side so I trying to shift this but then you're getting this nice uh, big view of the pen which ugh. still seeing the tangling and that's what's important right but I was having having some some conversations about tangling and um, you know and <sighs> And and while I, I'll tell you this, while I fill in some of these orbs as I decide which direction I want to go out here, um, and one of the things that I think it's hard, and you know, I, I've heard it said that you know, you know, artists a lot of times will have a rough time with the concept of, and actually, and I know I know some that do, the concept of you know, there's no such. Uh, there's no such thing as a mistake and untangle, and you know, and, and what I talked about here, where you know the you know imperfection is is in and of itself you know perfection, and because um, some it's it's just hard to to do that because I, I think if you're um, well, it's kind of like uh, you know as a classically trained musician, sometimes it's just a little bit difficult to let loose, and once you can, it's really fun, and then also you know, seeing similarities, 
um, you know, I mean, the differences are easy to, to pick up, but there's, you know, it's just fun. And, um, but it's a little bit of a process to get to that point, at least a mental process. And so I'm kind of thinking of it on the same, um, in the same respect, you know, if you're a, uh, you know, a trained artist, you've gone to school and taking, taking classes, some of, you know, probably what we're doing is just kind of like, <laughs> it's, it's like a, like a rock and roller versus, uh, you know, a classical, you know, trained musician, where it's like, you know, well, th there is things you have to pay attention to, you know, <laughs> like form and function and all of that kind of thing. And so I can kind of see that um, in this world. But at the same time, when I, um, have had fun and I'm going to add I'm going to add another one over here I think I'll maybe I'll shape it this way a little bit um had fun with uh some friends in a in a rock band and you know and I was you know and I brought my bassoon and my instruments and they none of them know how to read music and I really don't improvise you know please give me it on the sheets although I understand the rules and um and structure and things and there is structure in popular music well for the most part um you know and but what was so fun was it's like all right i'm taking the challenge i'm gonna get out of my own get out of my head and get out of my skin and listen more than just reading and it really accentuated my um my regular playing and it was it was so much fun so i just share that um number one as as you know as i'm doing all of these orbs and um, you know, something to talk about, <laughs> but also just as a, you know, as a thing, I, th I think a lot of people, they see these really cool things that people create. And a lot of times if you've not taken, um, I know some call it a basic class. I need to get it on the schedule. Um, I call it Zentangle Essentials because where we talk about the method of Zentangle, cause there is a method to it. It's not just, you know, drawing cool things. Um, there is a rhyme and a reason, and I, I don't know, I kind of like to know that kind of thing. So, um, and I had, had people that were after taking that, they're like, oh, I see, I understand now. Um, because there's a little bit more on the backside again, than just, you know, creating cool drawings. And then too, you know, for those of us that are not artists or, you know, for whatever reason, um, yeah, just not artists. We'll just say that. Oh, I got to put some orbs over here. Then I think it's it's you know it's important to know and 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 to also not. I have to do this myself. Not pay attention so much to what I see other people doing because I'm like, oh, that's so gorgeous, and I just don't have that ability. And it's like, nope, nope, nope. Can't be thinking on those lines. You know, we can do anything that we put our mind to, and Zentangle is designed for anybody that can hold a pen and I don't care if the hand is shaky or not you know that just adds character and whimsy and that is you know and it's just fun and we just all have to you know work ourselves to look at look for um, the little things you know little achievements you know if I can ever if I can make orbs like my mom because she does a great job and um you know, mine sometimes are kind of sloppy, but you know what? They have their own character. And so it, it's it's an interesting road kind of getting into that mindset. But it's so nice when, you know, as you get there, that's part of the, you know, th uh, therapeutic aspect to Zentangle. Because as uh, Rick and Maria say, you know, art resembles life and... Um, and it really, it really does. Art, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, music or whatever, we're, we're creating things and uh, it's just, it's just lovely. So I just want to share a little philosophy session, apparently, as well as tangling. Just because I, I like, I like to make sure that everyone is enjoying this and also, and also gets it and understands. This is, it's, it's about what you do and you making you happy with what you have drawn, not what anyone else things and not measuring what you've done to what anyone else has done and there all right let's do a little bit of shading you know and I actually and I didn't even overlap any of them that's something else that you could do and have fun with 
Um, I just kind of had them growing out of the out of the uh, tipple, out of the orbs. And what I'm doing is I just put some graphite in in the base there where the where it's kind of growing from. That's a great place to to start if you're you know um, not sure about what to do when you're tangling, you know, and how you want to go about doing the shading. That's a great place. And then you know, and I'm I'm bringing it up just as far as I feel like it apparently <laughs> well as far as it will kind of go which looks neat and then you know what I think I'm gonna add let's just try it with this one I'm just gonna put a little graphite at the tip here wow and I didn't want to get it on the outside but that's okay hmm you know and some of it is playing and I understand because I'm you know I'm uh no oh, that's kind of interesting Let's do it on a couple more. I'm just putting it in the middle here and then spreading it out just to kind of cover the tip. And you have to, if you do something like that, you kind of have to go into the next, at least that next uh, aura section so that way it doesn't look like you're just filling that in. Although, you know, I'm thinking also now a little bit, well, maybe, or you know, if you wanted to add some color, there's no reason why you couldn't. Sometimes, oops, <laughs> shooting my tortilla. Um, like I said, sometimes it's neat to just have fun. And I like to put it on kind of on both ends sometimes because then it makes it look bendy. Yeah. Oh, now, okay, let me throw this in there. All right, we're going to go heavy. We're gonna make that gray on the inside because because my tipple is kind of it, 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 it's kind of wide, so I'm putting some graphite on either side at least at least on the insides here. Let's put some let's put some here, especially this one because I have a lot of it. And let's see what this does. Okay, so, and even though this is going to make this really dark gray in here, I'm not worried about it, because what I want to do, my goal, was to push it down below. So, wh where it was a minute ago, and actually even just putting, even just putting the graphite sinks it. Um, it was, the, the, the tipple, the orbs, was on the same level as the um, payas. So what I'm doing is with adding, and I, and I went extra dark, and I'm not spreading it out too far. I'm kind of just doing more of a back and forth motion because I'm not. I don't. I don't want to color it all in. I'm leaving, as you can see, like here, some some light, you know, as it naturally happens. And one of those I could go darker. Oops, got this down here. If I wanted to. Ha ha! So look at that. How that just popped that payas right up on top of of that tipple. And that's just, you know, an extra little tip when shading you can, that you can also think of is, well, what do I want to have on top? It's kind of like, you know, when you're doing a tangle and, and maybe where you're using the halibut technique and you have to, you have to decide, well, what's, what's going to go, what's going to be on top so that way you make sure to put everything else underneath it. Well, you do something like this and, you know, and, and, and instead of having all of it be kind of on that same level, just with the graphite, and I'm just going a little bit darker on this side because it looked a little bit light, and, and just a back and forth motion so that way it spreads it out and you get the, you get some gradient, but not where it's taking over. Um, yeah, super cool. And then, of course, then you always I'm always finding in little places that need to have some things added. And that's obviously, you know, normal. Oh. I can spill some more here. I just need to slow down with my, my little tipples. And then let's, we can put some graphite here.
<laughs> and just having fun with it. Could fill in the whole background if you wanted to. Um, but that's up to you, and that's what is fun about Zentangle in general, but this tangle in particular. So if you enjoyed this, would love to have, you know, like, um, share it, uh, subscribe to, subscribe or follow, uh, depending on what... Uh, um, on what platform that you are watching this on. Uh, I appreciate all of those. And uh, make sure to, if you're, if you're a new, so if you're subscribing, make sure there's always the, uh, the notifications and you can, you know, turn those on and off or decide how you want to be notified if notified, if you want to be notified at all. So I encourage you to make sure to take a look at that. And um, with that, just check out the description section. Um, besides the step outs, I have, you know, ways to connect with me. If you'd like, we have a nice Facebook group. I am, posting on Instagram regularly now. Um, and we, I do classes uh, once a week at least. Um, mostly free, but I do have some paid ones. We kind of go a little bit more in depth. Would love to have you check those out and join us sometime online. So with that, thanks so much for watching. I wish you happy tangling.